Nikki Elise Elwin and this is my story. So as I said, my name is Nikki. I am 21 years old. I was born and raised in sunny England to Angela and Jeff Elwin. I have a younger brother and a younger sister called Scott and Lucy and they are the best. I pretty much had a fairy tale upbringing. It was amazing, it was happy, it was full of love, it was full of cuddles, it was full of truth words and encouragement, just what every child dreams of really. And when I was eight, I decided for myself that I wanted to commit my life to Jesus and be in a personal relationship with him. So I said the prayer and when I was about 10, I got baptised which was amazing. So fast forward a couple of years, when I was 18 years old, I packed up everything and moved to Orange County, California. I moved there by myself, didn't know anyone, and I moved there to go to FIDM, which is the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, to study visual communications. And my time there was amazing. I met some amazing people. I came back home to sunny England and went to university to study fashion communication. At first I really really liked it but slowly but surely my lifestyle clashed with the university lifestyle. The more time I spent there the more I just knew that it wasn't right for me to be there. I continued with my year there and just tried to make the best of it while I could while I was there. So after the first year I came home for summer and you know I was really in limbo because I didn't know what to do. So I decided to get with God every morning and listen to preachers, pray about my situation, worship, and just really get in the Word and get with God and share with Him what I was feeling. He would provide me with direction. It got to the point where I was setting my alarm to wake up super, super early in the morning so that I could listen to like three preachers in the morning and there I was sat in my bed still in my pyjamas, my hair pinned up, taking notes, you know, I was sat there worshipping. I just had such a peace. Like, getting with God every morning over that summer, which was summer 2012. It was just amazing, and I was at a place where I'd never been before with myself and in my relationship with God. I can't describe the peace that I had, it was just overwhelming. But obviously, as I said before, I was praying about what to do in regards to university. And as I spent more time with God, um, it became more apparent to me that it was the right thing for me to do in stepping away from university. And for any of you that may know me, you know that I'm a planner and I like to have things organised. So, although it's what I wanted to do, stepping away from university actually scared me more than going back to university because at least if I went back to university I would have a plan whereas now I didn't so I completely had to throw everything at God throw all of my worries and concerns and give it to him trust him with it and trust that he was going to provide me with a new plan a couple of weeks passed and I still had perfect peace um, about my decision. I was just praying and I felt as though it was right for me to work for the church for a year, it's Paradox Church. I was so excited and I, I had so many plans and it was just a really, really, really exciting time and I was on cloud nine. I, I just, I couldn't wait to get started and put the ideas that I had into action. I just had a peace that, like I said, I've never ever experienced before and it was the happiest that I've been and that my family and friends had ever seen me at because I was so wrapped up in God and it was just amazing. So a couple of weeks passed. One morning I 
woke up and put on a preach and I started to get this lie in my head and it was quite overwhelming and I was like where on earth does this came from that doesn't make sense that's not true and it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before and I was like well this is weird so I gave it to God and in his word it says if you have any worries or doubts or if you feel discouragement or anything like that to God with it and go in his, in his word and he'll give you peace so I did just that but it still wasn't alleviated and that to me was really scary because it was really hard my whole life if anything was wrong I would run to God and give it to him and you know he would take care of it but with this it was different and it was scary because it wasn't taken away a couple of weeks passed and the lies were just getting worse and worse and worse it was lie after lie after lie I'd, I'd wake up and there'd be a new lie and because it's in your head even though it's even though it's not logical you're still fearful because you're kind of thinking if it's not the truth then why is it in my head why am I thinking it they were really destructive and horrible lies it was really hard but when you're in it and when that's in your head and it won't go away no matter how many times you pray or, or you know um, it's scary because you don't know why it's there and you don't know why it's not going so that was scary so after having these lies and bad thoughts for a couple of weeks I confided in my mum and then I confided in my dad and we literally did every possible thing that you couldn't think of they prayed over me they prayed for me they spoke truth words over me I prayed for myself I spoke truth words over myself I was filled with the Holy Spirit which was amazing I continued getting in God's Word I'd listen to preachers with my mum we'd have worship sessions it was as if nothing could distract me from these lies you know they were there and they wouldn't go no matter what I did it got to the point where it was six weeks in and I couldn't even wash my hair it was so bad that my mum was gonna have to physically put me in the shower because I had no motivation to do anything I, I, I had no appetite because the lies made me feel sick to my stomach because they were scary and the, it was it was hell like this time in my life was hell and it got to the point where I didn't think I was going to get out of it alive nothing changed except for in a positive way I was at the happiest time in my life I was at peace and it was just an amazing time so nothing changed to make these thoughts come about it had a massive effect on my day-to-day -day life everything changed it was all flipped on its head I couldn't do anything I had no motivation I couldn't watch the TV I tried to watch the TV um, I would just start crying because these lies were just so strong and horrible and painful and I couldn't engage in a conversation with somebody because these lies were just so prominent that nothing couldn't distract me whatsoever. It was a living hell. We kind of developed this strategy to try and combat the lies that whenever a lie would enter my head we would combat it with prayer and the Holy Spirit but it got to the point where we were praying every minute of every day no exaggeration and it was just too much because it wasn't lifting it and 
it was it was scary not only for me but for my parents because my mum's always been there to give me a hug and wipe away the tears if I need that um but she struggled because she couldn't rescue me from this so it got to the point one friday in um september 2012 when we could not take any more i was just a wreck i was distraught i was really skinny and pale from feeling horrible and having no energy because all of the energy I did have was being poured into prayer every second of every day to try and destroy these lies in my head but it just wasn't working and it was draining me. I went and talked to my dad. I was crying my eyes out and I was like dad I really feel I don't know what to do. I, 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 I'm just I'm petrified and then as I was talking to him I was just really scared that these lies were gonna come true. And I was like, but dad, I don't know what else to do. Um, God's not helping me. Prayer's not helping me. I'm lost. And then it was as if something in my head, the only way that I can describe it is if someone flipped a coin and it landed in my head, I felt something drop at that second I remember saying to him dad something's just dropped in my head and I feel like there's no going back believe it or not I was co-leading an alpha course so regardless of how I felt um which was lowest of the law of the law I had a commitment I went um and a, a topic that we were covering that night um completely resonated with me. I'm not the type of girl to share everything with everybody. Basically, if I'm going to tell someone something, it's my immediate family, like my mum, my dad, um, Lucy and Scott, and my best friend, Tasha. But with this, and at Alpha that night, I felt like I had no other option but to pour my heart out to the people who were sat there. I couldn't hold it in because I was out of options I, I had no choice so I basically told them everything whilst tears were just streaming from my eyes and as I was telling them tears were streaming from their eyes and you know they got round me and they prayed and they claimed healing so I drove home from Alpha walked into the living room my mum and dad we both sat there with their iPads and um, their laptops and they sat me down and they said, Nikki, we think you've got depression. <laughs> and I was like, depression? I can't have depression. I'm not the type of person who gets depression, um, you know. I haven't been through a situation like a marriage has broke up or a loved one has passed away. I haven't been through a situation that can make me depressed. Up until, you know, six, seven weeks ago, I was really, really happy and at the happiest point in my life and I can't, I can't be depressed, surely I can't be depressed. So we went to the doctors on the Tuesday after and we, we told him like what I was going through and he made me take a depression test <laughs> um, and I filled it out, handed it back to him and he said, wow, you are severely depressed. And although you'd probably think that I was like, really sad that I had depression. It was just such a relief. It was like a way to just being lifted off because for all of this time, I didn't think that I was gonna get out of it because one, I didn't know what it was and two, I didn't know how I was gonna get out of it. But it was as if I finally had an answer and that's just what I'd been craving. Not only me, but my family as well. So he went on to say that 
what had happened was that it was physical depression which is when your serotonin levels which control your mood in your brain um, just crash and mine had crashed it hit the bottom um, it was at an all-time low there was nothing that I could have done to prevent it and although this might sound funny the coin flip that I mentioned earlier um, I think that was the ser my serotonin levels crashing and hitting um, and that's why I kind of had the feeling that there was no going back I really believe that it was God that brought me into that doctor's surgery because I needed help and you know I got put on medication I got put on the lowest dosage of sertraline which is an antidepressant and I finally for the first time in a really long time felt as though this thing that I was feeling um, was curable. Well my answer to you is yes. I am the living proof of that. Um, you know, I was in the best place that I'd ever been in my relationship with God. Some may say, well, it's because of wrong living or hanging out with the wrong crowd or whatever, but I really wasn't. I was in the best place that I had ever been in in my entire life um, with my personal life, family life, my relationship with God, everything that you could possibly imagine and it still hit me like a ton of bricks so yes my answer to that question is yes no it most definitely wasn't an overnight change although that's what i wanted and i thought that it would kick in straight away and you know I, after a couple of weeks i would hopefully be back to normal but that definitely was not the case at, at all um, you know it took a lot of months um, with the medication and a lot of increases in the tablets um, but the medication was just one area that we went down we also tried a lot of other stuff like fish oils which is meant to increase your serotonin levels as well um, but we also discovered that gluten might um, affect your serotonin levels so I completely cut gluten out of my diet and went gluten free and, and prayer obviously that was another area that we just completely poured into um, and I would just pray that God would use the medication um, and just help me <laughs> that's hard because it was really hard to cope with um, you know I was still getting the lies and it was really really hard um, especially for the first couple of months being on the medication and after being diagnosed um, but I dealt with it in a lot of ways my mum suggested that I started writing so I started writing on a family trip that we took to Spain about a month after I was diagnosed um, and the writing was basically to kind of help me get my feelings and my thoughts out there and you know put them down on paper as and I guess it was kind of like therapy um, and little did I know from that I was writing every day especially when we were in Spain I was sat in the sun with Taylor Swift playing in my ears um, and writing and writing and writing and writing and um, from then on I've been writing ever since and that has played a big part in dealing with the depression. I also tried to hold on to hope and um, I surrounded myself with great people and um, my family were amazing you know, although it was really, really hard to hold on to hope, um, 
I had to try my best because I had nothing else to cling on to. Um, I had to hold on to God's promises even though I felt as though he was a million light years away from me and as, it was as if I felt as though he wasn't living inside of me anymore even though he was. He still had his home in me. Um, so I had to cling on to that fact um, rather than go on my feelings. And another thing that helped me was Hillsong United brought out an album in the February, I think, of 2013. And it was called Zion. And there was a song on there called Oceans Where Feet May Fail. And there's just a line in that song that really, I connected with it and it just resonated with me. And it was, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith be made stronger in the presence of my saviour. And that really connected with me um, because even though I was in this desert place, I believed it was for a reason and even though I didn't see the reason, I felt as though God was making my faith stronger even though I was in a horrible, horrible place. To be honest, no, I didn't question my faith, um, but I was very angry with God. It was, for a couple of months, I was just very irritated with him. The fact that I knew and I prayed so hard to him that, you know, he could just click his fingers and the depression would just fall away from me and it would all be gone and it would be a distant memory. The fact that he could do that and he didn't do that, no matter how much pain I was in or how many tears I cried or how much I just cried out to him and saying, God, please just click your fingers and heal me instantly. He didn't do that and, you know, it's easy when you're kind of out of it to say, oh, but I know why he didn't do that. When you're in it, you really do not care how it gets fixed, you just want it fixed. Um, at first, no, because there was no distracting me from what was going on in my head. But, you know, after a couple of months passed, it was about five months after I was diagnosed, I started to go on Pinterest again and it was refreshing because I wasn't able to be inspired by anything during the early stages of the depression. Through Pinterest, I started to develop some of my old passions and they started to grow and although it wasn't immediate, it progressed and I was starting to design again. I was designing inspirational um, pictures, you know, just to put on Instagram. At first it was just for a bit of fun, but it really kind of encouraged me, um, but it also encouraged other people. And that was something that I found amazing that even though I was in the depression, I was able to inspire people um, as well as encourage myself in doing so and also stumbled upon a makeup tutorial and I've never watched a makeup tutorial on YouTube or anything like that before. I decided to watch it and I was hooked. You know, through this depression I'd completely lost all motivation to get dressed on a morning or put makeup on or do my hair. Like I mentioned earlier, wasn't washed for six weeks. And I just looked a mess. So when I started watching makeup tutorials, it was really, it was amazing because I started to feel like I wanted to start experimenting with makeup, which I'd never wanted to do before. You know, I had my routine and I stuck with it. But with, with this, it was as if I was, God was putting something in front of me that I was inspired by and it was a new passion that was developing within me which was amazing considering that I was still in the depths of depression. 
Oh my word, definitely. Um, there was a defining moment and it was around Easter time of 2013. Like I mentioned previously, I was very, very, very angry with God. I didn't want to talk to him, but I had no choice because I needed to run to him with the lies that I was still getting. And although they were slowly decreasing, I was still get, getting them and they were very prominent. Um, but around Easter time, I, I don't know, something happened. I, I was writing one night, really late, and I had oceans playing and I just, something came over me and I really believe that it was the Holy Spirit um, because it was as if I suddenly knew that everything that I had been going through um, since, you know, I got depression um, was for a reason and even though I knew that this was the time where I actually felt it. I finally realised that this was part of a bigger picture and part of a picture that I may not even see the end of because it was such a big picture that God was painting and I was just part of that picture. If God had clicked his fingers and healed me instantly, no one can relate to that. In this moment I realised that by God clicking his fingers and healing me instantly, that would only bring me satisfaction. Me going through everything that I had to go through and my story, it's not just for me, it's to help other people. Other people who might be suffering. Through this, I really believe that God wants me to relate to people and people who are going through something, no matter how big or how small it is, that they'll be able to relate to my situation. Although I know God didn't give me depression, I am actually thankful that I was able to go through, which I never thought I would say, because it's actually birthed something amazing. After writing, day in day out for so long I realised wow this could be a book. It's as if through the depression and through this really difficult time in my life God has not only restored and renewed my passion in things that I was passionate prior to the depression such as fashion, food, travel and helping people but also He's given me new passions and an excitement for trying new things like makeup, gluten free recipe. The Truth Diaries is now a brand and it is book, blog, site, store. And I had this idea in May 2013 and this was something that I wanted to do. It was all of my favourite things rolled into one and it was the most passionate I'd been since the depression but also a long time before that. But I wanted to make sure it was the right thing for me to do. So I was just praying about it. I actually got the opportunity to go to Chicago with my dad. It was really, really, really exciting, but I feel as though I got confirmation there. Not only were people stopping me in the most <laughs> randomest of places, um, but they were saying, we love your outfit, We, where, where did you get your top? Do you have a business card? Are you a stylist? Um, all of these things, and I was just blown away because it was as if God was just confirming through people, through people who I didn't know and didn't know my dreams, it was being confirmed that this was what I was meant to do. And since then, I have been working <laughs> flat out on the Truth Diaries. I feel as though I am just on a whole different level now than I was before the depression. Although depression should 
tear you down and rip you apart, which it did. Through God's love and God's grace, he built me up to be an even better person than I was before the depression. He's revealed to me things about myself that I didn't know beforehand and given me renewed goals and amazing dreams and this today is one of them. On the 22nd of February 2014, my baby of The Truth Diaries has been born into the world and honestly I could not be more excited. This is my story and I hope that you've been inspired and encouraged by it and I hope that you enjoy and love The Truth Diaries as much as I do. Thank you.